There goes that radio DJ dude yammering on again about the importance of listener interaction. Well, you know what? I yammer because I care. Hey, I'm Jeff, the radio DJ dude, and I have stumbled across this super cool feature that I just launched on my all 80s powerhouse, triplex80s.com, and I can't wait to share it with you. So here's a scoop. It's this listener request feature that's completely automated because my station runs on rotations. And this dealio has got something for everyone. You AI voiceover enthusiasts, yes, I got you covered. You want your station to have a pro sound with listener interaction? Oh, that's what this thing's all about, baby. So if you're ready, let's throw those request lines open and let's get some fake listener requests on the air. So locked and loaded, I've got a couple instant request examples for you. I guess there's three types of these instant request bits. One, they're listener only. Number two, it's jock only. It's you saying, hey, Stacy from San Diego wants to hear the bangles. And then the third approach, which I really dig, is a hybrid where you're incorporating your voice and the listener. And oh yeah, I've got all three for you, baby. So here's a listener only. Triple X 80s. I request. I've got the Triple X 80s out of my car and only have one request. Pretty easy. I know you guys could pull this off. Anything from the Culture Club. Love that. Thank you much. TripleX80s.com. And this, the easiest of the three, a jock only instant request. Triple X 80s. I request. Just got an email from Jessica claiming to be the world's biggest Annie Lennox fan. Well, will I fact check that claim? Here comes some Eurythmics. TripleX80s.com. And my favorite, the hybrid approach, where you're interacting with a listener. It sounds great and it really sells the fact that you are, you know, quote unquote, taking calls. Uh, that's it. Triple X 80s. My request. Lee from Boulder, Colorado has a 30 year crush on who? Oh, Pat Benatar. No 80s lady rocker is hotter, and she has still got it. Oh, yes, she does. And I don't blame you, Lee. Pat is still totally rad. Triple X 80s.com. So, one reason I'm going bonkers for this new feature is the fact that it's another opportunity to infuse some listener interaction, listener participation onto your station. So if you're not live, which I know a lot of you, your stations are like these robo jukeboxes in the clouds, and that's fine. But after a while, if your listeners don't hear any semblance of human interaction, well, they tend to get bored and move on because we all crave that human connection. And there's no better way to pull that off with this little bit. Because when listeners hear other people who sound like them on the air, they perk up. They think, wow, this is actually a real live radio station. They take requests. Hey, I like to make requests. I think it would be cool to be on the air. How can I get me some of that? So this bit checks so many boxes. Lifting the hood on this feature, there's really not a lot of moving parts. You've got the production or branding elements, the request open or stager, followed by a voiceover file, whether it's listener only or jock or jock and listener, and then the station ID at the end. Of course, I can't leave out the star of this show, the code. But for all you codophobes, I don't want to stress you out just yet. So take a look at this relaxing stream and take some deep breaths. It's going to be okay. I'm going to walk you through the code part. You can do it. So for me, to make this as easy as possible, I just leverage some of my previous Rad Quest production elements. Triple X 80s. My request. Triple X 80s.com. I stripped out some of the key parts in order to produce shorter stagers. And then all the bits end with the station's website ID. Triple X 80s.com. So hopefully that'll nudge people to go make their own request. Now, to that, and I know this is going to be a big challenge early on a bank account with a negative balance regarding listener requests. So to whip your listeners up into a requesting frenzy, you got to let them know that you actually take requests, that you air requests. Totally awesome, ladies. By request. Get yours in at xxx80s.com. Chip.
You got to prime the pump. And the best way to do that is to deploy some really good sounding AI listener requests provided by our friendly bots in the sky, of course. And sure, you could use text to speech. But, you know, with the speech to speech technology, I'm completely jaw dropped and blown away with the quality. So I don't even mess with text to speech anymore. I record audio files in the style I want the bots to deliver the material in. Hey there, I'm Regina, and yes, there is a chance I did dye my hair to match Cindy Lauper back in the day. So now we're going to generate a female listener request. Hey there, I'm Regina, and yes, there is a chance I did dye my hair to match Cindy Lauper back in the day. But come on. And for all this AI speech-to-speech technology, I'm using Eleven Labs. They do a bang-up job at this. So those are your listener requests. And for the jock-only bits, well, you know how to do that. Crack a mic and go crazy. So now that you've gathered your ingredients, well, you got to import all those babies into Radio DJ. First, it's good to create a new subcategory. I'm placing mine in voice tracks and calling it Requests Artists, as you'll later see why this is relevant. I love placing all the files in a separate folder, and it just makes the import process that much easier. Change that category to voice tracks, request artists, calls are fine, track I'm sending to other. I want to use the ID3Q data, bring those Bambinos in. So at first glance, you'll see that for artist, I gave them the title of the artist that the request is for, which plays into our code in the next section. I put the name of either the AI voice or my initials. So when I'm mixing these up in the database, I can guarantee the proper vocal separation. I don't want two requests from the same AI voice. So that really helps to give them these titles that are easily recognizable. So let's dive in to this request for ABC. That looks good. Important to check overlay file because these files will be running over a music bed. For details, all that looks spiffy. Jump into the queue editor. I'm a stickler for tight execution. So uh, next start queue points usually need to be adjusted. So they're a little tighter. Looks good. As thrilling as this process is, I'll catch you on the other side of the tedious data entry. Since the mechanism of this code relies on your artist names, you have to make sure to get them right. And this is where, you know, doing a once over is really important because I just spotted an error right here. If I didn't catch this, Charlotte's requests for the bangles (laughs) would never happen because there aren't any artists in my library called the bangle, (laughs) unless one of the bangles went solo, but I don't have any of those songs. So we have to... Make sure this matches our artists' names in the library. Okay, that's good. So before we jump to the code, let me let you hear how this sounds. Triple X 80s. I request. Hey there, I'm Regina. And yes, there is a chance I did dye my hair to match Sibby Lopper back in the day. But come on, us girls were all about the fun. And a little Sibby would be nice right about now. Thanks. Triple X 80s.com. Me so diggy. I like it. So let's put our peepers on this magic code. So I'm in a rotation and I've added a track from a SQL query. I want you to set set the parameters for which song artist to play based on the song artist of subcategory 171, the request voiceover. Because obviously you're not going to have a request voiceover for every artist in your library. So if you did this based on you know, your song artists, well, you'd continue to, you know, hit dead ends and it'd be train wrecks because there's not going to be a request for every artist in your library. So you base it on the requests that you've actually recorded voice tracks for. So this is saying, check out the artist name, but make sure to take a peek at the artist data in the queue list, meaning songs that are already on deck in your playlist, because I don't want this to set up a request of an artist that's already going to be played. And make sure to do this for subcategory 171, the request voice tracks, and make sure that artist has not been played in the past. For this test, I just had three minutes. But you can either insert your repeat rules here, 
or I'm knocking it down. I'm being a little more flexible. So I'm saying 45 minutes and your song data should match that. So you could play a request from an artist that hasn't already been played in the past 45 minutes. This is saying, and choose this request file if it's not already in the queue list, if queue list is null, and I'm ordering it by date played. So next up in the code, it's selecting our request stager element, the one that mentions requests and has the music bed, and then subcat 171, then it's plugging in our request voiceover, and it's saying, make sure to choose the file from this subcategory that matches this string up here, the at request. So that's how it's selecting that artist. That's the VO, and then it's playing the jingle, the station ID, and then rolling the request for that specific artist. And once again, in this song part of the code, it's once again consulting the cue list, making sure that artist isn't in there. It's making sure that the track repeat interval rules are being honored, and then the artist repeat rules are being honored, which I added a custom number. And we're just saying we want one of these to play. And that's the code. Now, the only thing you might be saying, well, how do I know this song ID for these production elements? Well, I'll show you where to find that. So you edit the track and bingo, bungo, there it is. Since I have multiple rad quest, you know, stagers, I'm going to have to modify this code. If you only had one production element to set up the bit, then you could use an ID number. I don't want to get too deep in the digital weeds here, but this is important. If you have multiple production elements in a certain subcategory, I mean, for ease, you could just create two different subcategories, one for your own openers and one for the station IDs at the end. But the more complicated way is to find the subcategory of this particular production element. There it is, 172, RadQuest, Listener, and 5 is the ID for jingles. Since the openers and the station IDs are in the same subcategory, I'm using genre to make sure the code only chooses the opener in this position and not, you know, the station ID. So if you look at ID genre 154, that is calls. So for a refresh, these opening stagers, they're in the category jingles, subcat, radquest, listener, and I'm setting the genre for the openers to calls. You have a lot to choose from, which gives you more flexibility on the back end. Whereas the genre for the station ID at the end is in pop. So that differentiates the two. And if we pop to the SQL query, then we see it all come together. Choose this RadQuest listener jingle from subcat 172 and only pull from the genre calls, which is number 154. Something else I added down here to the actual song request is I've opened up the genres. Before, I just had 143, which for me is top 40. All these genre IDs, subcat IDs are going to be different for you. So you really have to change everything in orange here to match what's in your database. But before it was just pulling songs from the top 40 category. Well, I've expanded to add 118, which is rock, and then 70, which is just a general hip hop category. And this is the structure for the code to pull that off. And then if we pop over to run query... To take this thing on a little test drive, boom, we see it works. So it's starting off with a segment opener, request for Whitney Houston, station ID, and the song. How will I know from Whitney Houston? Boom. Triple X 80s. By request. Hey, I'm Marcus. I'm Kieran in from Amsterdam. And while they're not my favorite group, I just had to request Millie Vanilli. I mean, come on. They're as 80s as they come. Thanks a lot. Triple X 80s.com. Hmm, not too bad for a fake listener request, right? Totally AI. And the big takeaway there is to make sure to include some natural speech patterns, some uh, pauses, some laughs. You can even include an um or an ah, just to sell the believability. It doesn't matter if there's a live mic 300 miles from <laughs> your radio station. This feature gives the illusion of a live sound, a real DJ talking to listeners, playing the requests. And that's a tasty recipe for listener engagement. Now I know some of you might be trembling in the corner because you saw all these lines of flashing code on your screen, but please don't let that stand in your way from really 
kicking your station up a notch and making it sound really good. Hey, if this coating bonehead could pull this off, I know you can too. Just follow my lead. I've got all the copy and paste ready code in the description. There's a link, go get it, it's free. I want you to succeed. And becoming more comfortable with using SQL code in Radio DJ really allows you to pull off some acrobatics that you really never thought possible. So it's so much fun to get your feet wet in this and it's even better when it works. And after watching this little ditty, you find yourself either dancing a jig or maybe just shrugging your shoulders and saying, hey, you know, that wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Well, you know what to do then. Please hit me with a like and a subscribe because, oh yeah, I am cooking up a lot more tasty things, all things radio. Because after all, come on, I'm Jeff, the radio DJ dude. That's what I do. That's why I'm here. And until our next little radio rodeo, please just do one thing. Keep rocking those mics all over the world. <laughs>